Hi, my name is Kwekwe. I'm a pharmacist. In today's video, I want to answer a few questions that have come up since I did my video reviewing the benefits of CoQ10 or Coenzyme Q10. A few of them seem to be recurring and I decided to make this short video and address some of those questions. If you haven't seen that particular video, I'll put a link in the description. It's one of my better performing videos. I highly recommend that you take a look at that particular video. So the first question and seemingly the most popular one is what is the recommended dosage of CoQ10? Well, unfortunately, there is not a straightforward answer to that. That's because there is really no established dose for coenzyme Q10. Your dosage will depend on certain factors such as your age, the condition that you're trying to treat, and even your general health status. But with that said, most of the studies that I reviewed use dosages between 100 and 1,200 milligrams, with the most common being between 100 and 600 milligrams. So for example, in one study to determine the beneficial effects of taking coenzyme Q10 with respect to statin-induced myopathy, that is when people get muscular pains and cramps when they take statins, they realized that dosages between 30 30 milligrams and 200 milligrams daily seem to do the trick without any adverse effects. So on the average, people taking coenzyme Q10 for statin induced myopathy, usually the range is between 100 and 200 milligrams daily. In another study to investigate the beneficial effects of CoQ10 on glucose metabolism, that is people who are taking it because they are diabetic, they realized that 100 milligrams a day of CoQ10 seem to improve insulin resistance and reduce blood glucose levels compared to the placebo, that is people who were not taking any CoQ10. Now, what I did notice though, that when it came to migraines and the prevention of headaches, the doses were actually slightly higher. I saw doses between 400 and 600 milligrams. In one particular study, they used 400 milligrams on the study participants and 400 milligrams was enough to reduce the frequency of the headaches or to prevent the migraines. And as always, I'm going to be putting links of those studies that I'm referencing in the description for those of us who want to read it a little bit further you're welcome to do that. On the average, between 100 milligrams and 200 milligrams, it's pretty standard for everybody. But then of course, everybody is different. So you definitely want to check with your doctor to see what is best for your particular situation. The second most popular question was which CoQ10 to take or which coenzyme Q10 is the best. Now this is because there are two forms of CoQ10. There is one called ubiquinone and there's one called ubiquinol. And General consensus says that if you read most people, or if you watch YouTube, a lot of people are saying that go ahead and take ubiquinol, which is the active form in the body, which I don't have any complaints against. But I also don't want us to just shed ubiquinone just like that before, for the following reasons. And let me hear me out and let me explain. Now, the reason why people opt for ubiquinol over ubiquinone is that when you take ubiquinone, the body actually has to convert it into ubiquinol. Now, the issue here is that I'm not against ubiquinol. I think ubiquinol is the better of the two. But the thing is that ubiquinol is more expensive, slightly more expensive than the ubiquinone. So the question is that the difference in their absorption really justify the price increase. So as I stated, when you take ubiquinone, the body actually converts it into ubiquinol. And the body is very efficient at this conversion. About 95% of the ubiquinone that is taking is actually converted into ubiquinol. So if you're a relatively healthy person, you are in your 20s, you know, you have everything going right, your body is very efficient at converting ubiquinone to ubiquinol. For, for such an individual, I would not necessarily, if I were in your shoes, I would not necessarily spend the extra money getting the ubiquinol. Of course, if you can afford it, go ahead and buy the ubiquinol. But I want to establish the fact that ubiquinone is not entirely useless. The issues about ubiquinone starts when we start to age. You know, around about in our 30s, number one, our body's production of ubiquinone goes down and our body's ability to convert this ubiquinone into ubiquinol also starts diminishing. Definitely by our 40s, that conversion is significantly reduced. And therefore, this is my take on it. If you're a relatively healthy person, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, and you cannot afford ubiquinol, I think ubiquinol is a perfect way to go. However, if you are over 40, you're in your 50, you're an older person, then you may want to consider taking ubiquinol. But like I said, sometimes we get too hung on, you know, these semantics. If ubiquinone is what you can afford, please go ahead and get it. But on the other hand, if you can afford the ubiquinol, that would be my preference. But I don't want this blanket statement that is out there that ubiquinone is not a good product. It is also very well absorbed. In any case, I'll be putting links to both products in the description. So whichever you decide for, just go for it. The third question that seemed to pop up a lot was side effects. People wanted to know, you know, what are the side effects of CoQ10. But like generally speaking, CoQ10 is very well tolerated. Very, there were very few reported adverse effects, even at doses as 
high as 1200 milligrams that they were using in some of these studies. Generally, though, if anybody's going to experience any side effects, they are usually gastrointestinal, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that kind of thing. But they tend to be they tend to be transient or they tend to be temporal. And usually you would notice that in people taking relatively high doses. So if you are taking the average 100, 200 milligram dose, generally you're probably not going to experience anything. Of course, if you experience any adverse effects, do let your doctor know. And another pro tip is that coenzyme Q10 is a fat soluble supplement and therefore it is well absorbed in the fatty environment. So taking after food is a good idea. Fatty meal, that's the best way to take coenzyme Q10. So hopefully I've cleared up some of these questions. If there are more questions, please feel free to put them in the description. I'll take a look at it and do well to respond to them. Thank you very much for staying through. Catch you on the next video and stay blessed.